Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Mackenzie. And I'm Jonathan. We are husband and wife and we'd like to welcome you to Teradice. And we have just spent the last six days recovering from Gen Con, the largest board game convention in North America. It was capped out this year at 71,000 attendees and we could feel it. It felt really packed in there, didn't it? Yeah, so this is a ginormous convention, all with board games, and we have finally sat down, collected our thoughts, and are bringing you all of the goodness that we saw and that's coming to board games this year and beyond. <laughs> so if that sounds like something you want to see, then just keep watching. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about our massive game hall. Now, the first thing people do when they get back from conventions is they post a picture like this <laughs> where they <Yeah>. show <laughs> all of the games that they brought home from the convention. So we're going to start by talking about games we brought home, some that we bought, some that we got as review copies. Uh, now, there is sort of not really a distinction between how much we like the games, whether we got them as review copies or bought them. Uh, I think there are a lot of games that we got as review copies that we would have otherwise purchased. There are also some that we'll be having coming in the mail in the future or we'll be getting soon. So we'll talk about those as well that we saw at the convention. Uh, but first, I thought we'd start off with a couple fun like buying categories. So least expensive game we bought. Ah, uh, yes, the Bargain Hunters. Right here, we got Endangered Rescue Galapagos Penguins. So this is from Grand Gamers Guild, and it is a 60-minute escape room in a tiny little card pack. It has it eight, 18 cards. Uh, now, I did open it up. There is a QR code, which brings you to a website, and there's a whole sort of web interactive thing associated with it. But it was on the hotness list and seemed quite interesting, so I'm excited to check it out. And our most expensive game we bought. Oh. I'm so sorry, Mackenzie. <laughs> this is Moonraker's Titan Edition. Now, I picked up Moonraker's. It's a game that we've played before, uh, but it has just one of the best, coolest, unique mechanics I've played in a negotiation sort of bargaining game. Basically, it's a deck builder where you're going to have to try to fulfill these missions, but you almost never be able to do it on your own. So instead, you'll ask your friends to help. And the rewards on the like quest cards that you go under the mission cards are divisible. So I can say, you get two of the points, you get two of the cards, I get all the money, and we can kind of split things up. Uh, it's very interesting, very beautiful game. Also just really big fans of the designers and think they've done a great job with it. I backed yeah. Brink as well, so excited to have this in our collection. Yeah, so Ivy Studios is definitely a, I would say they put out a lot of luxury board games, so like they're mm -hmm. gonna be highly deluxe, deluxe to the max. Um, and so they are very beautiful. If you want to show off that cover again, it's just like oh, how yeah, it shines. Oh yeah, it's got a nice little like, I'm sure you can, oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> so they do beautiful games. And I know he got this because Oops. he was also staring at it across from that. our booth. <laughs> you were also staring at Moonrakers across from our booth. Ivy Studios was right across from us the entire time. Yeah, they were taunting us from eight feet away the whole time we were demoing Bark Avenue. Yeah. Next category is games we're most excited about. So yeah. I will do the game I'm most excited about first. Is it up? Yes. Here it is. So <laughs> the game that we bought that I'm most excited about is a Mandalorian Adventures. So this is, we've already gotten a chance to play the first two missions today, and I'm really enjo enjoying the style. It's like a smoother, more streamlined version of Jaws of the Lion, I would say. Not to like, give like too much of a spoilers, but you're playing through these missions, and the card system mechanics um, are really, really neat. Look out for a full review coming from this one. Next up, Undaunted 2200. Uh, so this is the first Undaunted game to break out of the World War II sort of genre. We now have a sci-fi space sort of battle. It adds mechs, it adds a bunch of crazy stuff. Uh, now we have fixed boards instead of these like tiles. And I gotta tell you, it had a hefty price tag, but when you pick it up, this is definitely the heaviest per square footage game we brought home. Oh my gosh, does it weigh a ton? It's, there's a lot of cardboard in there, so. <laughs> yes, and this was one of the ones that was on the top of his list because there were very limited copies. I think we got this on Thursday mm -hmm. and there were only selling 25 copies that day and you were number 21 in line. Yeah. So it was going really <laughs> fast and they didn't bring a lot. They ended up getting more later, but it was a very hot ticket item. Now, what? was not on our shopping list that we picked up. There were our surprises, biggest surprise purchase. Yeah, why don't you go first? All right, so mine is going to be from Blue Orange Games, which I haven't played one of theirs <laughs> in a while, and the, uh, this is Slings. So honestly, we picked this up. If Blue Orange watches this, the guy that pitched us this game is just really good at his job, and I was like sold just like based <laughs> on how like his pitch. Um, but it is a lovely party game where you were trying to 
come up with, quickly come up with, cat, let, there's a category put down and you like, cats love it. And you have a bunch of letters in your hand and you have to think of the letter, a word that goes with that letter that gets with that. So it's a very fast speed party game. My sister was here this week and she played a lot of games we picked up at Gen Con and this was the one that she wanted to take back with her and take with her to college. So yeah. this, this was a big surprise for me. I think what I love is that the category changes every three words. So as you're trying to get rid of all your letters, you gotta think really on your toes. It makes it a fun word game. So my biggest surprise purchase was this little game, Sardinia, which is a reprint of a game called Creta from like 15, 20 years ago. I don't know. But anyway, I was, I was first drawn in by this magnetic clasp box, which I have to just show you it. This is probably the main thing I'll show you is like, it's actually the board and it clasps together. Uh, so you get this huge board for like the size of the box that, that this is and it's like pretty easy to put back together. But this is this area control game, you're moving stuff around, trying to get influence, you know what's currently scoring, what's scoring next. You can choose to end the round at any time. So there's kind of this sort of like variable race for, uh, and it's up to four players, so it plays a lot of people. I love the surprise, like, wow, I liked that. I'm yeah. Gonna, I've never heard anything about That's this. That's my favorite thing about <laughs> Gen Con. All right, so that is like our category. So now we're gonna move into publisher specific. So everything that we're gonna show is things that we currently have on with us at the beginning. Um, and these are all review copies, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. So these are all review copies. So thank you so much to those publishers, big caveat. Um, that that's what we're going to be showing. But that does not mean we aren't super excited about them. So first we're gonna talk about Robinsberger, which is a big company we talk about on this channel. They're the ones that make Villainous and all of, lots and lots of the Disney IP. So, so we're gonna talk about Disney. All right, so first one I want to talk about is Lorcana Gateway. So a lot of people have heard Lorcana. It's like Pokemon, Meet uh, Pokemon Disney, basically, or Magic the Gathering. <laughs> this is Lorcana Gateway, which is a way for people that may not have played traded card games, but are really into board games for them to learn and to become as obsessed with Lorcana as we are. So I'm really excited that they came out with this because I feel like a lot of board gamers aren't, are hesitant to try Lorcana just because it's a, a TCG. And we got, I haven't played this, but Jonathan played it the other night and I'm excited to go through this as well. It just seems like a really fun idea. Yeah, in a few words, um, basically missions that will progressively unlock more and more mechanics in the game and you actually get a board. And for people who are like me and were thrown off by the little paper damage tokens when they played their first trading card games, you get real cardboard punch outs. So for you Lorcana people out there, if you want punch out, cardboard damage tokens, that's reason enough to buy this. Yeah. Next from Robinsberger is going to be Chronicles of Light. Now, we mentioned this in our Gen Con pre-show, but I was very surprised with how much hype this was getting. Such not only at Gen Con, but yeah. also at D23, which is the big Disney conference happening right now. This game, you are all, you are playing these female characters battling the darkness with mm -hmm. light. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I really Great know about it so far. All I know, I do know that Violet gets to fight the Underminer and I'm very excited for these throwbacks. Yes, so <laughs> I'm excited to do that. Full review coming for that very, very soon. Next from Robinsberger, we have this one, which Robinsberger was very excited about because they gave <laughs> us this pigeon and it's called Oh My Pigeons. Uh, a ridiculous party game of foul play. So there it is right off the bat, how ridiculous this game is. It's definitely going to be a party game. We got to play through it once the other night uh, where you're going to be trying to get all of the all your pigeons lined up on the bench before other people can. You it's will fling of, pigeon poo. Yes, yeah, it's lots of Just take, take that, that uh, fun, <laughs> more information coming on this one, but there was lots of, people were very, very excited at Gen Con to get these. They had like a claw machine where you could try and get a pigeon, so. More on that coming soon. Now, last for them, do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, sure. Uh, we got That's Not a Hat Pop Culture. So we have a new That's Not a Hat game. Main mechanics difference is there's now cards that you can send in any direction. So not just left or right, but like across the table. And then this is all like pop culture like references. So it's, I mean, it's things like lava lamps too, but like there was a capybara and I didn't know what a capybara was. And Logan, our Mackenzie's sister was like, duh, it's a capybara uh, because they're apparently very popular right now on the TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of like really kind of silly things. Next up we have Cosmos. Yeah, Take it cool. away. So Cosmos, just two things. Uh, we have Vendetta, which is sort of the like adult exit game. Uh, mm -hmm. So this we're playing as sort of morally gray characters that are potentially good, potentially bad, and we're kind of like covering things up. 
So interesting theme choice there. Excited to check this one out. It looked really cool. They had it splayed out on the table. And we will be getting a copy of The Gang, which is like being marketed as the crew killer. It's like basically can we okay. guess whose poker hands are going to be better than whose based on hints that we're giving before the final hand comes out. Yeah. And it's really fun. We, we enjoyed our play. They of pitched it. it to us as if uh, you can get people that like poker to play it with you. And also, if you don't know how to play poker, this can help you learn how to play poker. <laughs> so that is from them. They showed us a lot of games, but those were the two of our most anticipated from them. Next up, we have All Play, which I love of this company. And so we mm -hmm. were able to check out some fun things from them. The big one and probably a huge game at the convention that people were very excited about is going to be da, 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 River Valley Glassworks with these cute little animals. The artwork is by Andrew Bosley, which is a really big board game artist in the industry mm -hmm. right now. He's known for the Everdell art, if you're familiar with that. In this game, uh, we got to play through it once. You are trying to... Oh, twice. We played it back to back. Oh, yeah. You're trying to <laughs> make glass. And there's all there's going to be this fun river thing. <laughs> this fun river flowing down the... Glass flowing down the river. Do you want to explain how to play this? <laughs> Honestly, it's like, it's like a, you know, river glass collection. Like, I want a lot of the same colored stones. I also want to try to, like, get a lot of variety. Uh, honestly, it's, it's really fun and it's short. It's, what does it say, 25 minutes? I was very Not surprised even. with yeah. how deluxe this was and how short it was, but I like short, crunchy games, so I like it so far. So more on that. <laughs> uh, next up from River Valley, I mean from All Play, we have Habitats. Now, this isn't a new game, but this is uh, yeah, it's a slightly older one. Slightly mm -hmm. older game, but they thought that um, the marketing people there thought that I would like to check this out because I love animal tile placement games, which it seems like this <laughs> one is that theme. You are trying to create a you're creating a wildlife reserve and you're trying to put the best animals that will fit in your wildlife reserve. That's all I know about it, but I'm excited to check that one out. Yeah. Next up, we have four Tiny, tiny little oh, games. The fourth one. <laughs> Four tiny little games from All Play. Uh, we've only played a fairy so far, which is like a betting game. But I like that these are really tiny. They told me that they're good to take with you on the road, on the plane. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably do a short. Um, and also, in order, these are five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and twenty minutes in playtime. So these wow, are very, very short games. Very organized. Uh, now and they're unorganized. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the pitch there was like uh, we talked about how we love to travel with games. We travel a lot, so it's a lot of button shy, a lot of tiny epic, a lot of you know those games. And they're like, well, we've got stuff for you. That's it from All Play. Next up is North Star Games. Yeah, cool. So we picked up two things from North Star this year. We have Biomos, which is a game all about creating a biodiverse planet, you're placing tiles to try to terraform your planet, and you can even swap tiles based on like, okay, I have a mountain next to water, now it's ice, which I think is pretty cool, so you can try to score those regions. And we picked up Isla and Something Shiny, which is a narrative game for one plus players, so we're gonna kinda like decide together where to send this poor, poor bunny off to uncertain demise, because I hear it has quite a dark ending, but I'm very excited for what I've heard is a compelling story. Yes. <laughs> Even if I'm crying. <laughs> Next up is going to be from Lucky Duck. Now we have several games that we're going to be talking about from them. First up from Lucky Duck is going to be Nestlings. Now this was their big game, I would say, that they were showing off at Gen Con this year. I got to actually see this all set out at Gamma earlier this year, which is a publisher convention, buyer convention. And this game you are trying to create help out the different habitats and ecosystems of these eight different bird species. I That's all I really know about it so far. I'm excited mm -hmm. to play through it as I saw a lot of people looking at this and it looks really pretty. So next from Lucky Duck is Captain Obvious, which duh. is, <laughs> duh. <laughs> of course that's what's next. <laughs> is a party game where as far as I can tell, it's a game where you are going to be writing an obvious sentence and filling in a word and then you're going to pass that to somebody else and then they're going to write down a bunch of other words that it could be and then someone has to, you have to try and guess which word actually was the obvious answer. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I got out of that. Last from Lucky Duck is Quartz, which in Quartz, you are going- The dice game, because there's another Quartz, I think. Quartz, <laughs> it still is the title. Quartz, the dice game, which is where you're going to be playing dwarves and you are trying to mine all these crystals out and do it the fastest before the other dwarves can and sell them all off. So, 
Sports. Sweet. Next up, we've got Flat River Group, and we have one game that was published by Sit Down, and that is Magic Maze Tower. You've probably heard of Magic Maze. It's this like very stressful game where you're like giving people hints, but you can't talk to each other. Well, but no talking still here. But now there's no stand timer, and there's no like, hey, do something. Uh, so it's a little bit sort of more friendly in that regard. But basically, we're going to be trying to go through various levels of this tower to escape. And we all kind of know part of like what our objective is going to be, but you can't communicate. So should be very interesting. I've, I've had a lot of folks already interested in trying yeah, this out. Yeah, I've so. never tried the original, so I'll be yeah, coming in with fresh eyes. And we also, we're going to be getting Babylon from them as well, which is a beautiful game about very creating the Hanging Gardens. Cool. And it looks pretty neat. We got to play a quick demo a couple of rounds, and it was very fun. That one yeah. surprised me. He picked out that one to, for us to go look at, and it's really cool. Next up from Friendly Skeleton, we are going to be checking out Speed Colors. Now, <laughs> I did not know this was going to be here. We got to try it out. It's basically like... Uh, it's really stressful coloring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's super fun, and this is honestly this is the most fun party game that I tried at Gen Con this year. Uh, so yeah. you're going to be trying to memorize the colors of these card, and then you're going to be flipping over that card and trying to recolor it. The catch is that those colors are all laid out in the center, and there's only one marker for each color. So everyone's going to be trying you're to grab for the those. purple card. Again. <laughs> yeah, and trying to remember. Um, so lots and lots of fun, lots of laughs. With As you just one. repeat in your head, purple, orange, green, blue, yellow. <laughs> yes, and the markers work really well. Great, so that's it for all the review copies that we have here with us. We will be getting more in the mail over the next couple of weeks. You know, everybody's got crazy bags, and also if a game was super popular, we're like, sell all your Gen Con copies, we'll get it in the mail later because we're not even gonna have time to cover it for a while. So that's gonna include Gnome Hollow from The Op, which was the balloon sculpture out front this year. Oh my gosh, this is the first time that's ever been done, and wow, that was cool. Yeah. But the I game had it itself. Inside. You can go inside the balloon. Yeah, the it was pretty wild. But aside from the, you know, purely very cool cool marketing that they did. The game actually has a lot of substance and is going to be a lot of fun, so we're excited to talk about that. They also have another game, Stock Exchange, which is another beautiful gardening. They had like a gardening theme this year that was so cute. And this is another game that's sort of like you're marketing and selling certain flowers. They're going to be worth different amounts based on how many are out in the market. Seems very interesting as well. They also have a party game, Da Da Da, that's about making up language and then trying to get people to like guess cards based on made up language. I'm so excited that be about fun. this. This is kind of like <laughs> essentially trying to communicate with my two year old. Uh huh, yeah. <laughs> and then their last big release next year, they will be having Tea Witches, which is designed by the same design and art studio who did Flamecraft but it's actually heavier, like people wanted Flamecraft to be, I guess. So uh, that will be another fun thing that's coming around the corner. Now we also played Avant Card from Resonim, which was a really fun little card game that we're excited to be getting in the mail as well to talk about. And the one that I was most excited about, about the stuff that we'll have to wait for from Kids Table Board Game is Layers. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be coming to Kickstarter and it is a heck of a lot of fun. You are designing a dungeon and then trying to get the person across from you, purely two player, to run through your dungeon, but it's like dungeon battleship. Uh, so basically, they're sort of making their way through, and you're like, nope, you hit an angry blob. <laughs> and so yeah. it is a whole ton of fun. Uh, we had a great time. I constructed a dungeon and destroyed the guy from KTBG. Yeah, so. <laughs> I was in a different uh, meeting when Jonathan was seeing layers, and he called me. He says, you have to come over and try this game. And I was like, really? He's like, yes, you have to right now. And it, it's really cool. Yeah, so we'll be covering that for the campaign. Excited about that one. Yep. And yeah, we talked about the gang in Babylon already. We've got some music themed games, Hi-Fi and Rock Hard 1977. One is a record player, the other one is a rock band in the 70s where you got these amp knobs that you can turn up to 11. It's designed by the bass player of the Runaways. So a lot of really fun music yes. games coming out this year that we'll be excited to cover Both as well. Very, very high ticket items at the con this year. So there was no way that we got them <laughs> by review or by paying them for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, and also we just, you know, we're going to have enough to cover in the, yeah. the near term future. So, so just send it to were, us later. <laughs> you've, you've already passed the budget. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So uh, that's almost it. We tried to get our hands on the Barcelona expansion, but it was not available. It was only available for pre order. But we did pick up Windmill Valley, which is designed by the same guy, Danny Garcia. Very excited to play this game as well. 
uh, it's, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. It's in the Netherlands where the, the tulips were, uh, and you've got a windmill. I mean, yeah. It's a pretty cool action selection. Yeah, so with Windmill Valley, we are heading into the section of games that we bought with our money but didn't fit in the first couple categories. So. <laughs> We're gonna talk about High Society, which is actually an older game. I'm when Much did it older. come out? Oh, it's gotta be like 20 plus years. Yeah, yeah. it is an older game, <laughs> and Jonathan went and found this and he says, let's play it. It's based I really like this system. I enjoy the I game. I had yeah. never played it before, and it's very, very popular. It's been around forever. And you're trying to work your way up in society by making the most money, but by betting the most money and trying to be the highest person to show off your wealth, but you can't lose all of your money because the person with the least amount of money automatically loses the game, and then it's the person <laughs> with the most money that wins. So it's all about this how to appear wealthy, but also not be totally broke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but very fun. Yeah, we also have, I promise it's in here, and this is just the base box, but we got the Clank Catacombs expansion, Layers and Lost Chambers, which I am extremely excited to play. I love Clank Catacombs. So it should be a lot of fun to play the first expansion, which had very long lines every day. It sold out as far as I it can tell. It was very popular. Day, so. Next was on our Gen Con preview list, and that is going to be Sirens. And this one we picked up, it's a little small box game where you are trying to construct different melodies and you get different points based on how you put those together and different point values like that. We've only played through it once, so I wanna make sure I play this again before I give my final thoughts. But Jonathan was able to take a picture of it and play back our music, so that was really fun to see while we were oh, there yeah. as well. <laughs> that was fun. Next up, I got some upgraded bits. So I went to the Geek Up store, uh, or the, yeah, yeah, the Geek Up board game geek store. I picked up the Quacks of Quedlinburg acrylic tiles, which I've been wanting to clicky clack those for so long. I also picked they're up- They're so expensive. <laughs> they're so expensive, but they're so cool. Uh, I also picked up game trays. So I get these like six tray trays and like four tray trays. So I can put these in my game boxes and I actually use them in games permanently to like store those games. So I've already put a few of those into games that I felt needed them. I also picked up all the Wormspan upgrades. So I pulled out the, the dragon coins just because I'm excited about those. But I really wanted to upgrade Wormspan, so I did. Yeah. And lastly, this wasn't at their booth, but I did pick up some more dragon shield sleeves so that I could sleeve our Lorcana and Star Wars Unlimited cards. Oh, I'm so disgusting. I can't believe I sleeve now. But <laughs> there we are. <laughs> So that is all of the games we purchased. Now, before we head into our last categories where we're going to talk about what we did at Gen Con besides buy things, I want to talk about the probably the question on everyone's mind. How did we bring all this stuff back? It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> How did well, we do it? so uh, for one, I'm extremely good at spatial puzzles. So yes. I, there was a moment when I was holding, I don't even know what it was, Isla. I think it was Isla and, the, and something shiny. And I went, this is our last big box. <laughs> we have no more room. And we had no more room. We literally like bulged the zippers on every single bag. I was pretty worried that they were gonna get dented in our suitcases, but it didn't end up mattering because our flight got canceled and we drove back. So <laughs> oh, I wasn't even know you were gonna go to that story. That's a whole nother story. Yeah, we drove in from itself. Indiana to DC and then to New York. That was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah. Uh, so did everybody else. So it was a good time for everyone trying to leave Indianapolis on Sunday. <laughs> yes. So, but no, really, how we did it, how we got all these games back is that we had checked an extra suitcase that had um, just Bark Avenue, uh, which is our game, upgraded components that we ended up oh, yeah. selling the majority of. So we had a pretty much an entirely empty suitcase, which was the plan all along, like to encourage mm -hmm. us to sell that. So that's how we were able to bring all of these back. I made a beautiful Ivy Studios tote from our purchase of Moonmakers mm -hmm. as well. One thing that I did that was pretty cool, I like, am not the type of person to like the like, war games where you gotta like measure stuff, but I wanted to try Star Wars Legion because they had it set up on this beautiful Naboo battlefront. So I did play that. I did a quick demo of it at the Asthma Day booth, which the Asthma Day booth was amazing this year, by the way. They had huge setup demos of Survive and as the, the Mandalorian game and all these other games, super cool. But I did enjoy playing that. I wouldn't buy it, but I enjoyed that I got to play it. We did this for the a huge a lot of the convention, so we definitely have to mention it. it. Is our game Bark Avenue? It's about dog walking in New York City. That was at the Good Games Publishing booth this year. Uh, they mm -hmm. are helping us publish and bring that to retail. It came out in December, and it, we worked at that booth a lot, uh, demoing the game, talking yep. to people about the game, and. 
if you're watching this video and you're one of the people that came up and chatted with us, thank you so much. Yeah. And if you're one of the people that sat down and demoed the game and you're finding this video being like, hey, I know those people. <laughs> thank you so, so much. We really appreciate it. And we love talking to you guys at talking about this game and actually getting to meet people that actually play the game in real life. It, there, I don't know. There's like that. It's such a great joy, and it really makes it all worth it. And mm -hmm. so we also announced during Gen Con that we have a brand new expansion to Bark Avenue coming out, Bark Avenue Kings and Queens, and we announced that will be coming to Kickstarter hopefully uh, later this year. So I'll put a link down below if you guys are interested in following that Kickstarter, so you know when it launches. But that was a big part of what we were doing as well. And yeah. we also were selling upgraded components. We don't have many left, so I'll put a, also put a link to our website if you want to go check those out. And that is those squishy poops that I'm talking about. Also a plug for our partners that were sitting next to us from the Good Games booth. And those were the people that were putting out Curses and Covens, which is a really cute kind of like tarot card game where you're trying to find the witch. The witches in the town, and it's one against many. And they ended <laughs> up selling out, so very excited for them. So that is Bark Avenue news. This is the <laughs> villainous tournament. We t this was a big focus of our time last year at Gen Con. They did it again this year, which is the game Villainous, if you guys are familiar, is a game where you're trying to battle, you're playing a bad guy, trying to fulfill your evil plot. And they did a tournament and I got to go back and cover the tournament this year. The fun thing was that the same guy that ended up winning last year was You're also right, <laughs> was also competing in it again, and he ended up winning again. So he is awesome. If you see this video, you're you you're really great, and so is like. Everybody else you was playing. It. I loved I loved going around talking to everybody about how much they love villainous. If people had seen the channel, that was really cool. And they had the fun mashup. The final ended up being a three-way between three king candies, which was just like wild crazy. Race to the finish. Yeah. So there were, it took place over four uh, three rounds. Um, so the first round that everybody was in, it was the base set from Intro to Evil, which are those four base characters. The next round they ended up doing was also a four-player game of Yzma, Pete, Scar, and Shere Khan. Now, if you're watching this part of the video, since nobody answered it, uh, correctly on my Instagram, I'm going to plug it here because the people over at Robinsberger said if you can guess this correctly, they will send you something. So leave it in the comments. First, first, first comment I see, that's how I'll do it. What those four characters I just said, Yzma, Pete, uh, Shere Khan, and... Oh, I don't know. Scar. Scar. <laughs> what do these four have in common? It is uh, one answer that they said they kind of went for a theme. So answer that down below and Robinsberger will send you something if you're first one to get it right. Yeah. And speaking of Villainous, we also got to chat with a couple of designers of Villainous. Yes. Importantly, we spent time with Aaron Dono, who is one of the original designers of Villainous. He created the like uh, Captain Hook loses his hand card, like all those sort of like original fun mechanics that yes. we loved. I was so. able, we were really able to sit down and have a long interview with him about starting Villainous and the creation of the system and everything like that. So I will be posting that as a full length video. So if you want to nerd out about Villainous as much as I love to, I'll be posting that as well. Yeah, we also got to spend some time with Brian, who is one of the other original designers of Villainous who helped work on it. At this point, between Brian and Aaron and Mike, we're just, I think Peter is the, the other one that we would love to meet at some point. So We're do, we're yeah. covering the Villainous gang. Uh, it is, we are getting in there. It's mm -hmm. very fun. Yeah. That is the overview of a Gen Con 2024. We got to see a lot of people. Uh, I think the big thing that we took away from this year is how many people we've gotten to meet and know in this industry. This year really felt like we got to go home to like a family and friends. It didn't feel like yeah, the first year when we were walking in and we nobody knew us. We didn't know anybody barely. And the fact that this year it felt like just getting to talk to friends. And so that's what I really enjoyed. It just really got to see how much of community the board game space is, yeah. uh, which I really, really, really loved. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? 
I think that's it. Man, thanks for sticking with us. I hope you found some fun games that you want to check out too. We'll be covering a lot of these in more detail. If we really like them, they'll get full feature videos. So we'll talk about those in the future. Definitely. <laughs> and for everything we mentioned as a review, thank you so much to those publishers for asking us to take a look at these games and give our thoughts. I'm excited to share those with all of you. But thank you guys so much to watching. If you've made it this far to the video, we love you. Kudos to you. Or if you just skip to the end, we also love you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know whenever we put out a new video. And we'll see you next time. Happy, Happy playing. playing.